No matter what the next 45 minutes might make you think, this is BBC Two. Hi, I'm Richard. And I'm not Judy. And this is the FA Cup semi-final. Well, don't turn over, it really yeah. is. Yeah, oh, uh, look, Wolves, oh, Wolves scored. nearly scored. Oh, oh. Oh. Forget all your cares, kick off your shoes, here is the news. Take off your shirt, here is the dirt. Take off your pants, thanks. With Richard, not Judy. For better, not worse, it's live, not rehearsed. Made for no money, surprisingly funny. Welcome your whole set of pensions. Do they have no idea? So let's see how they do on this morning with Richard, not Judy. Through it, whole series. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I am Stuart Lee, and I'm called Rich Herring, and welcome to the last in the series of Toowoomba. No. <laughs> Oh, enough, please. Eight weeks, Stu. Eight weeks. This is yeah. the last of eight weeks of Tawimranger. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we started out with this show seven long weeks ago, mm. we came up with a mandate to make a difference, Stu, to change this crazy mixed up world for the better. Did we? I don't remember. Yeah, that. we did. Let's okay. see how we've done, Stu. Well, when we started this show seven weeks ago, Saddam Hussein and Bill Clinton were sworn enemies on the brink of World War III. Yeah. But then I made a joke about drinking cat's milk which both world leaders enjoyed so much they agreed to postpone World War III until the autumn. Yeah. <laughs> All thanks to Toowoomba! <laughs> yeah, when this show started some seven weeks yeah. ago, Long every Spice Girls record had gone straight in at number one. Yeah. Then I made a joke about Melanie Jism being able to jump, and bam! The next record only got to number two. Yeah. That's the power of Toowoomba! <laughs> Yeah, and when this show started out some seven long weeks, long ago, weeks ago, everyone called opal fruits opal fruits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but now everyone still calls them opal fruits, but their official name is Starburst. What a different place the world is, thanks to Toowoomba! <laughs> and you know, Stu, when this show started out some seven long weeks ago, yeah. you were 29 years yeah, old, oh, weren't yeah, you, yeah. Stu? Shut up. But now you're 30, aren't you, Stu? Today is your. 30th birthday, isn't it? 30 yeah, year old. I just I don't want to talk about man. it. Leave it. Leave it. You're all right there, old just granddad Lee. Oh, you're yeah. 30 year old. Yeah. Oh, you got your Th cardio. Yeah, all right, yeah. 30, is it too, is it 30 enough, years you? old, and my job is to be mocked by a fat man. What kind of a career <laughs> is that for? It's all right, Stu, because don't worry, because I'm no, sorry to my tech Mickey, but I've, I've got your present, actually. Look, yeah. Stu. Here it is. It's a pipe and some slippers. Oh, Get it? I'm implying he's old. Oh, you see, it's God. a good joke. No, that's not the real present, Stu. Here's the real present. Look. It's a Zimmer oh, frame, yeah, you yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying you're old, I'm exaggerating yeah. for comic effects, Stu. Do you see yeah, what I'm doing? Yeah. Uh, no, that's not the real present, Stu. Here's the real present, Stu. It's some incontinence pants. Damn Damn you. You. Not because you're old, because you are actually incontinent. That's you're right. five years quite <laughs> useful, but you are old as well, they aren't you? Oh, oh, Rich, this is ridiculous. You, you were 30 years old yourself last July. You were 30. What? Huh? <laughs> when did I grow old? <laughs> oh, curse you, God! For making me this way! <laughs> God's there. And um <laughs> he loves this show. <laughs> Will you please welcome at the keyboard Jo Unwin and her new lover, the musician Richard Thomas. Ooh. God of course the only person who can watch us and the football at the same time. Yeah. And uh, new bar slaves Trevor and Natalie. <laughs> On the eye. Wow, look at that, Trevor and Natty. Whoa. Why? Whoa. Why? Whoa. Why are they dressed like this? Why? Obviously, Stu. Why? For Palm Sunday. For Palm sure. Sunday. <laughs> How is that appropriate? Just is, is appropriate, it? that's all. <laughs> anyway, here are this week's aims. Aim one to prevent any more babies being stolen from hospital by killing all newborn children 
in a King Herod style purge of the infants. <laughs> Aim two, to have things called what they really are. That means changing Starburst back to Opal Fruits, Choco Krispies back to Cocoa Pops, Anton Deck back to PJ and Duncan, <laughs> and Montfort University back to Leicester Polytechnic. A leopard <laughs> can't change its spots, can it? <laughs> Aim three is to celebrate Macaulay Culkin's forthcoming stag night by locking him in a house for an evening with two hardened criminals armed with real guns and spikes. <laughs> and aim four is to save time and money in organising next year's Grand National by just having some horses shot at the start. <laughs> and aim five is to have Prince William... That's just it, just to have Prince William. He's a good-looking young man and he will be mine. Those are the aims for this week. <laughs> One of my younger flock came unto me the other day and said, Who do you prefer, the Blur Band or the Oasis Band? Ah, I replied, whatever passing fad or fancy may come or go, the Lord Jesus is number one in my charts all the year round. Yes, but ignoring Jesus for once, which band do you think is better, he countered. Ah, oh, my ignorant friend, I continued, but we cannot ignore Jesus, for he is everywhere and in everything, and he is good. But the youth did not understand my words, which fell upon his ears like barley amongst the linoleum. He grabbed me around the head and said, no, not ah. Just for once, try answering the question without turning it round to Jesus or God or all that rubbish. Ow, I said, all right, stop it, you're hurting me. All right, it is the Blur Band. <laughs> Good, he said, as he arrogantly turned his back and left. But as he was going, I whispered, it isn't really, it's Jesus. <laughs> I <have> never heard. <laughs> now over to Joe Unwin and the musician Richard Thomas for details of this week's phone-in. Yeah, this week's phone-in aims to put to the test public feeling towards our inquisitive citrus fruit, the Curious Orange. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right, that's right. Yeah, good. Dial right, dial 0891338801 if you want to see the Curious Orange sing another song while accompanied by dancing children of every nation. Oh, and dial 0891338802 if you'd like to see the Curious Orange crushed into a pulp with this hey. juicer. <laughs> 0891 dial now. Like all mothers, Mother Nature is delighted to keep in touch with you when you're appearing in hit TV shows like BJ and the Bear or My Two Dads, but when you suddenly find yourself hosting Wet Insect Attack, oh, she becomes strangely distant. Hi, I am Greg Evigan. This is when insects attack. This week, giant radioactive fire. <laughs> See, there I am in the park, on my own, minding my own business. You know, it like this kind of clicking sound. Remember, this is uh, genuine amateur camcorder footage, you know. I turn around and there's this great big giant fly, right? And before I know it, he's up on like his iron legs like he's a man, like he's big, big, big like a man. I think to myself, you've got to do something about this. So I run around the back of him, right? And I kind of lick him with a big kung fu chop. And before you know it, he's running off. The fly that is. You see, right, I don't know how the fly got that big, right, but I reckon it must have been some kind of mutation business caused by radiation, or it could have been from Mars or another planet. I don't know, but one thing I do know, he had a vendetta against humanity. <laughs> Can I get my tiller now, please? Well, David Lucas will be thinking twice before he minds his own business in a park again. At this stage, given the quality of the videotape you've been sending in lately, it seems unlikely that there'll be any more editions of when insects attack. I'm Greg Evergan. Goodbye. <laughs> I made this! <laughs> when insects attack. There, yeah, or as everyone's calling it, we are. We are. And um, don't forget, 
those numbers for the orange phone in again that's 0891338801 for sing and 0891338802 for die yeah. <laughs> now last week we asked you to write in and say why you think you should be king of this week's show and uh, david darlington of edinburgh gave the best reason why you should be king is over there dave what was your reason for being king because I come from the same small town in Scotland as Ross Davidson, who used to play Andy O'Brien in East Enders. Yeah. And he went on to, what did he play after And that? he's now in the Admiral Insurance advert. Well, that's right. Well, well, he's been sacked, actually, but that, that, that was reason enough. enough. David, you are this week's king. Crown the king. Yeah. <laughs> David, there was another. Ah, oh, there was another King David, wasn't there? He was very holy and good. Have you got an edict or a law you'd like to pass as uh, king? Yes. After the last week, I think it should be made illegal to talk about Coronation Street in public. Oh, good okay. law. Well, we'll have to dra drop some material from later in the show then. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, so as King, King David, you will not only be touched by a man who has the head of a grown man, but whose face is so small it looks as if it has not grown since he was an infant. Right? <laughs> you will also get to eat and drink whatever you desire from this. The monarchy in crisis trolley. Yeah, here it comes. The trolley this week, dilapidated, reflecting the gradual collapse of the monarchy there. The flags there, for all the nations who've left the Commonwealth. <laughs> and in keeping with the reduced status of the monarchy, all that's on here this week is one Golden Graham, right. which you must eat. Here it comes. Eat it! Catch eat it. it! Eat it! Eat, eat it. it! And uh, Eat the Graham as it's delicious, isn't it? Scum the and stuff. press scum, jackals of the press. Leave them alone! Let him have a moment's peace, Leave please! Well, they live in, well, you know where they live in, they lots of fun. They all need each other, one for all, all for one. They come out your belly button, oh, God. And over to Organland they creep. It's Lily Liver and Henry Hart, Barry Bladder, Beryl Brain, the whole lot of them. It's Organ Gang again. Oh, God, another Organ Gang. I don't know if I can face it. Who's in Mr Cosgrave's pedal bin today? As if I cared. It's Tweaky the Toe. Hello, Tweaky. Look, Tweaky, do you mind if we just get straight on with it? Yes, it's time to meet the Organ Gang again. The Organ Gang were on their way somewhere when their van broke down. It's no good, gang. We'll never fix this tire, said cheerful Henry Hart. Why don't we go and stay the night in that spooky castle? Oh, I get it. This week we're doing like a Scooby-Doo parody. What a brilliant idea. I hope that at the end the villain will say, I'd have gotten away with it too if it hadn't been for you pesky meddling organs. Hilarious. Uh, uh, I was just off to the toilet. <laughs> the gang soon arrived at the spooky house. I am Derek, um, Charlie, the caretaker. You keep away from this old house. It is haunted. I'm not the ghost, though. Oh, honestly, you know the score. The gang did stay at the house, and despite the fact that it's never a real ghost, they were still all scared as usual. Blah, 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 blah. I expect you think it's really funny doing a Scooby-Doo parody, don't you? God, I hate you lot, the public, with your low expectations. When I tried to do clever stuff on Trumpton, you never understood, and yet you lap up this trash like hungry rats. Can we get on, Brian? Television is a visual medium, not a soapbox for your half-baked grievances. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, anyway. In the end, the gang caught the ghost in a trap, as usual. <laughs> Let's see who the ghost really is. Charlie, Charlie the, the caretaker. caretaker. <laughs> yeah, like there was anyone else it could have been. <laughs> Wait! Derek, do you own them? That's right. This house is built on an old pus mine. <laughs> and I thought if I scared everyone away, I would be able to keep the pus all to myself. And I'd have gotten away with it too if it hadn't been for you pesky meddling organs. <laughs> That's the bit I was talking about. I'm just off to the toilet. <laughs> Wait. It's a real ghost. No. This time, it's just Tweaky. And everyone laughed as usual. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh yeah. 
<laughs> so, Tweaky, that's uh, nearly another episode in the can, isn't it? I'm Brian Kent, you know. Yeah, that's right. I used to work with Jeremy Irons on Playaway. <laughs> If things had worked out differently, that could have been me on Brideshead Revisited <laughs> and doing all that sexy stuff in Dead Ringers, but no, old Muggins here ends up doing this, don't I? <laughs> Goodbye, Tweaky. <laughs> Do I get paid now? No? Great! Tweaky the Toe, where'd you go? <laughs> Without a job, I work now. <laughs> Tweaky the Toe, no, no, no. <laughs> we got a cat to ghost now. <laughs> Tweaky the Toe, na, na, na. The organ gang there caving in on itself like a black hole. Um, <laughs> King David, uh, who, who would you like to be served by today? Uh, Trevor. Trevor? Yes. yes. Despite his ridiculously small face, really. That's enough. <gasps> Trevor, you spoke. I said that's enough. I've had it. You've been peering me about the size of my face for the last eight weeks. Now I'm going to have my say. Am I really so different from you? Well, you've got a much smaller face. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My face is small. But does that make me any less a man? Prick? Me? Do I not bleed? Make me drink a lot and do I not need to go to the toilet? Make me smoke cannabis and do I not fly up in the air? I have a dream that one day people with small faces will walk together arm in arm as brothers with people with big faces and people with normal sized faces as well. Judge a man not by the size of his face, but by the size of his heart. And I'd say this to you, Stuart Lee. Better to have a small face than a small mind. Yeah! Yeah! That was very moving, Trevor. I'm sorry I was wrong. Yeah. Now, let's all celebrate how wrong I was by all eating some of these new giant Smarties. Oh, that's Thank a lovely you. gesture, Thanks. Stu. Thanks, yeah. Great, what a good idea. Damn! They're too big for my tiny mouth! <laughs> they don't fit in my mouth! Damn you! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you weren't recording, were you? Oh. <laughs> uh, now, uh, we got in uh, quite a lot of trouble last week for mentioning all the dates of our yeah. forthcoming tour. That's, of course, in contravention of the BBC Charter, so we're obliged to point out we did it off our own backs without BBC approval. We've been told we can't do it again. We mustn't so mention... Excuse what? me, am I going to get to speak this, wo this week as well, like Trevor did? No, look, you can't speak. You're not allowed to. We can't pay you. Well, it doesn't seem fair. All I've done for eight weeks is push this trolley around. <laughs> it's sexist. It isn't sexist. If anything, right, we've played up to Trevor as a sex object in order to get away from the sexual objectification of women in most youth media. Yeah. Really, <laughs> not with those clothes. Yeah, but sure, ignoring no, that. Go. Anyway, you used to love pushing that trolley around. Oh, you, yeah. The look on your face, you loved it. You've changed. Oh, this is pathetic. I'm not just here to serve your needs. Well, okay, right. if you, you really want to have to say, say something, you read that out. Yeah. Read that yeah. into three there. Read it into that camera there. Lee and Herring's 31 date stand-up <laughs> tour starts on April the 14th. Playing at Norwich, Hull, Richmond, Newbury, Southampton, Don't milk it, Bristol, <laughs> Gravesend, Canterbury, Cheltenham, Kings Lynn, Cambridge, Guildford, Croydon, 
Bedford, Brighton, Stafford, Sheffield, Manchester, Leeds, Coventry, Northwich, Derby, Watford, Newcastle, Liverpool, Oxford and Reading. And you missed Good. out Cardiff. And Glasgow. Cardiff and Glasgow. Ca Cardiff. And Glasgow. Cardiff. And Glasgow. Say Glasgow. Glasgow. All right, you happy now? Yes. Good. Off, Off you go. go then. Get out. Go See on. See what I did there? It's yeah, clever, it's We didn't yeah. say it, did we? No, we Old John Burt. We tricked you, John yeah. Burt. Yeah. We tricked you. <laughs> <laughs> Time for an update on the viewer phone poll. <laughs> So, um, you remember the question, should the orange get to sing another song or should he be crushed to a pulp? Yeah, right. So far, 50% want him to sing. So that means 50% uh, want him to be pulped. So it's neck and neck. Actually, I used to much prefer their bits when the actor Kevin Eldon used to do yeah. stuff with his Tony Blair's oh, I love that so. Tony Blair show. Yeah. yeah, I was wondering, have you heard from the actor Kevin Eldon joke oh, since he went forget off Forget Monkey Man, forget he's toast, you know? Well, yeah, yeah but... You... Well, but what? Well, you can't just forget 26 years just like that, you know? Yes, you can. I, actually, he, uh, he sent in this video, actually. I don't know why I didn't mention it earlier. Did he? Oh, let's have a look at it then. That'd be good. Yeah, coffee! What? Okay. Hi, sweetheart. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. It's me, your husband. I'm uh, just sending you this video postcard to let you know that I'm fine. And uh, there's actually someone I'd like you to meet. A special new friend of mine. This is Olive, a lady who actually does understand me. And gives me everything I need. Okay, honey, off you go. I'll catch you back at the flat. Hey, let's try the red ones tonight. Woo! <laughs> so there you go. New lady, new job, new me. Okay, five, four, three, two. Hi, and welcome back to the QVC VC. And right now, have a look at this rather attractive casual sports top. And as you can see, it's got rather an amusing frog design on the front. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking, uh, frogs have got funny eyes, aren't they? And, and they're slimy, like Tony Blair's. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's made of material and would make a fine gift for perhaps a, an auntie or an uncle or a, a brother. Or a... Oh, way to go, Kerry, big time. <laughs> Phone in 50 50. You must be a little bit. There's this big knife coming down to your head. You must be a bit worried. No, no, not at all, Mr. Rich. The public love me. Actually, uh, one thing I was curious about, curious orange thing, is here. You know, um, last week, the other week, uh, when we had uh, the tree on the orange tree, your mother. Yes, yeah? it's poor mother. Dead now. Dead. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that right now. <laughs> I was wondering if that tree is your mother, right, then who is your father? Oh, my father, Mr. Steve. Yeah. Oh, I never knew my father. All Mother ever told me was that, that, that some fat drunkard ravished her one night in the orchard at the Cheddar Fruit Farm. It was awful. Oh, um, Rich? Yeah. I was lonely, Stu. <laughs> and leaves were fluttering in a seductive way. You! Any man would have done it. You, Mr Rich, it was you! Yes, Curious Orange, I am your father. <laughs> you had sex with a tree! You're sick! <clears throat> Well, I'd ask you this question, the curious, sorry. <laughs> Who is the real sick man in this so-called society, eh? Is it the ordinary, normal man who is sexually aroused by trees when he's drunk and has sex with them, an orange tree, even though it isn't even indigenous to this country, giving rise to a strange mutation that's half human and half citrus fruit? Oh, it's him, wait, obviously! Wait, son, or <laughs> is it the... Businessman <laughs> in his suit and Excuse tie. me! Excuse me, I what? really must protest. Wait a minute, who are you? I am a businessman who wears a suit and tie. I earn upwards of £12,000 a year. I own my own house, regularly have my employees around for dinner parties, make love to my wife every day, and have an indoor toilet which I use for its intended function. <laughs> I'm just trying to do my job as best I can and to suggest that my actions are in any way comparable to those of a man who swims through sewage or sends drawings of his winky to the Spice Girls or has sex with trees is extremely insulting to me and other businessmen like me. I demand an apology. Well, all right, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't think it through. I'm sorry. Good. I shall now take my leave of you and bid you good day. <laughs> look, look, Stu, look what the business is oh, wearing. No. Who's the real sick man, Stu? It's him, it was the businessman. It's the all businessman, along. after all, it is him. Yes, yes, I knew it was. Yes. The businessman there. Yes. The businessman 
Wearing women's underwear, a homage to, or if you prefer, an exact copy of the old Kenny Everett joke there. <laughs> that was literally sub Kenny Everett whimsy, wasn't it, Rich? That was Rich. Father, son. Mm. After a hard day of teaching English at St Ian's School, I like nothing better than to relax in the staff room for a couple of hours of marking before going home at about six o'clock to do some more marking at home before going to sleep. I prefer marking in the staff room though as there is a camaraderie there which is an enchanting delight. Marking, marking, marking. Sometimes it seems like all we ever do is mark. Haven't you got any marking to do, Ian? No, I've done it all. How? How do you always do your marking so quickly? Well, it's simple, and I don't really look at anything that any of the kids write, all right? <laughs> what do you mean? Look, it's easy. Look, uh, Tom Lipton, right? His dad is a doctor, and his mother's a university lecturer, right? A+. plus. He's bound to be good at English, isn't he? It's easy. It's only writing. But look, little Sarah Kemkin, her mother is a cleaner, and her dad is dead. What chance a kid like that got in life? D minus. See? You can't do look, that. Alan, I, I've got a lot to do. I've got to get through it. I'm going out on Sunday night to see Ocean Colour Scene at the Civic Hall. And I've got a spare ticket, actually, Siobhan. So, I'm sorry, excuse me. Along. Excuse Ocean. me, Siobhan. No, excuse me. Are you really saying you judge children just by what their parents do for a no, living? Not just by that, Alan. I work every day from 9 o'clock to 3.30 in the afternoon for nearly 30 weeks of the year, Alan. Well, I'm not about to waste my spare time by marking things written by people half my age. All right? <laughs> now, I'm going for a slash. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Miss Houston, um, yeah? I, I was wondering, if you're not busy this weekend, I, I wonder if you fancied a bit of a day out. Well, Alan... Um, well, just as friends, no strings attached, etc., as they say. Um, it's just on Sunday. I'm, I'm going up to see my father. Uh, he's in the old folks' home up by Canvey Island. Uh, he's not a well man anymore. He's, he's had mental problems and some, <laughs> some problems down below, you know, the water works. But last time I went, he, uh, he attacked me with a rolled-up newspaper. <laughs> I think he thought I was a fly or a bee or some other kind of insect, but you could pop in and say hello, or, or you could just wait outside while I go in, wh whatever you prefer. I mean, th there's a step outside you, you could sit on, um, and if you took a flask of drink and some biscuits, you, you could drink the drink and nibble on the biscuits while I was inside, if, if the weather was fine, yeah. whichever you prefer. You know. Afterwards, there's a happy eater I know on the A13, just outside there. It's, it's got all kinds of food, everything from all over the world. You could have whatever you wanted, my treat, anything, soup, anything. Yeah. Whatever you would most enjoy. I'm terribly sorry, Alan, but I'm busy this weekend. Oh, oh, the marking. Marking, yeah. yeah. Well... <laughs> Maybe another time then. Yeah, maybe another time. When when would be convenient for you? Is next weekend? Um, well, look, let's see, shall we? Okay. Um. You know that one they uh, did when they come on. Yeah. At the start, they wrote that when they were really stoned. I read about it in an interview. Really? <laughs> yeah, just off the face. Yeah. Hello, Alan. I, th I thought you were busy at the weekend, Siobhan. Oh, well, I finished my marking much earlier than I expected. Oh, so. oh good. <laughs> Well, was it a good pop concert? It was. Well, we didn't really uh, get to see much of it, Alan, because uh, we left after the first couple of songs. Shut up, Ian. Oh. Well... Marking, marking, etc. Oh dear. Ah, oh, it's sad, isn't it? The school there, or as everyone's calling it. <laughs> it isn't enough, yeah. Rich, just to make acronyms out of everything every week and expect people to carry on enjoying them. It's, it is stupid. People that. love it. People love stuff just repeated over and over again. Don't you? Yeah. 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 See? 
They're idiots. Look at them. Uh, to Mumranja. Stop. Stop. See, even Stop. when I've told them they're idiots, they Stop. still do it. They're mad. Stop doing repetitive stuff. Well, think of something new to do that is new and funny in a new way. Oh, see, so you want me to stop doing repetitive stuff yeah. and think of something new to do that's new in a funny way, do yeah, you? Yeah, I do, yeah. You want the moon on a stick, no, you do. No, no. <laughs> you can't just go back to that old... Just it's leave it. You, you can't just do something that isn't... Think of something that's funny. Right? You can't just say that isn't funny. I think that is funny well, doing you know, that. I, I don't, and I've well, decided it isn't. Well, you, know? you can't say something is or okay, isn't well, funny. It's subjective. I, I'll show you how I can decide, Rich. Wow. How I can decide. I'm going to show you by playing you this uh, children's educational... You say this every week, I don't, It's repetitive. Rich, right, you say right, the same thing. That I have taped of Sky TV. TV. Yeah, there it is. A moon on a stick. That's what you want. <laughs> Flog the cabin boy, Pliny, he's been naughty. Oh, hello, me hearties, it's me, Histor, Sky TV's one eyed time travelling pirate crow. I got £1.50, Histor. What? £1.50 in exchange for the cabin boy. You told me to flog the cabin boy, and so I did flog him, and I got one pound fifty for him. You numbskull crow! You see, flog has two meanings. To sell, or to beat harshly. I misunderstood which definition you were referring to, and from thence the humour arose. You feather brain! Yeah, feather like a bird's feather! How exactly? Egg! Are you going to coat? Coop, like a hen's coop. Without someone. Some hen, I hate hens. To clean. To preen, like a bird preens. The deck. The necks, like a bird's neck, they have necks. Look, would you just stop it? Hop, like a bird hops. Look, I mean it, would you just stop? Hop. <laughs> I mean it, listen. What? Would you just stop doing puns all the time, all right? What do you mean? Well, Pliny wouldn't do that, would he? Pliny wouldn't keep making puns all the time. It's too much and it isn't funny. So well, stop. for me, um, for me, it's the relentlessness and repetition that makes it funny. Well, it isn't funny. Well, I think it is Well, funny. it isn't funny. Well, so you stop can't it. just say that because humour is subjective, isn't it? My no, opinion of what's funny is as valid as yours. No, it isn't, because I is. Look, I thought up the character of You Pliny. did not. I did, we I we up thought it out together. From there. You didn't think did. up the voice. I told you to do that. And well, you're jealous because it's called Histor's Eye. Histor, not okay, Pliny's Eye. Right, okay, you want it to spoil it. All right, I won't do any puns at all. No, then, I'm not saying that's... don't do any puns, just do a few. No, it's better if, he, if Pliny doesn't say anything. No, it isn't obviously it better than. Look, are we going to get to my bit or what? <laughs> Lost. <laughs> just do puns, Pliny, that are close, right? Like extraordinary, and not ones that are miles off, like changing stop to hop, which is, it doesn't sound the same and has a very tenuous link to birds anyway. Oh, come, don't be pathetic. <laughs> I'll give you an extra worm for your tea. <laughs> oh, right. Screw you. <laughs> Screw you. I'm out of here. I've had enough of you. That's it. Let's see how you get on on your own. Go on. Love to see that. Idiot. <clears throat> this week, we'll be looking at the society of pre-Christian Britain. Julius Caesar's history has claimed it was a primitive land. But is it possible that our view of our own history is coloured by Caesar's annoyance at the failure of his three invasions? There will be a prize of a Pliny pencil case for the best essay I receive on the subject this week. Arr, all right, then. I'll give you one more chance. All right? Flight like a bird's flight. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Brilliant. Goodbye, children. Now, about this cabin boy you sold. Come on, what was that all about, the Do you understand now? Yeah, that's made it much clearer. Right. Those crows, I yeah. love them, they're great. Uh, will they be on tour with us? I think they will oh, be, good. yeah. Right, uh, but, uh, uh, <laughs> how will we pay the actors? I don't know. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> but that's uh, it's that idea that, that, that what they did there, it's very yeah. similar to a sketch I remember you doing on Fist of Fun yeah. about a blacksmith and a shepherd, isn't it? Yeah, well, for me, it's the repetition of the idea that makes it funny, All as right, I've fair explained. Enough. Yeah. Anyway, I've been looking at the old newspapers. The you old like the old newspapers. King David there? I've noticed yeah. this thing about people campaigning to get Deirdre in Coronation Street out of prison. It's pathetic. They're wearing free Deirdre t-shirt. It Ridiculous. really annoys me. People can't tell the difference time. between fiction and reality. Yeah, yeah. You know, next thing, old Tony Blair's be campaigning to get Norman Stanley Fletcher released. Wouldn't he? From Porridge. Yeah, what he's doing? Wearing Norman Stanley. Yeah, next ridiculous. thing you know, Tony Blair's will be watching In the Name of the Father campaigning to get the Birmingham Six released. Yeah, the Birmingham Six were real, Rich. They were, you see, people can't tell the difference between fiction and reality. Different situation. Like, they're not Birmingham Six. They're like the Famous Five it's or something. Like the they, famous they go, five they go off on adventures, seven. meet the like, Guildford Four, the Bridgewater Four. I am Roger Crowley, 
the wickedest man who has ever lived, ever. On Tuesday, I hijacked a goods train carrying a shipment of nuclear weapons. Leaving the driver for dead, I hurried off and set up the warheads in my garden, primed to destroy every major city in the world. I did warn you, my friends, but you chose not to listen. I hope you have enjoyed laughing at me these past few weeks. But who has the last laugh? Me. Quite literally me. Ha ha. Let the mayhem commence. Come on, Roger. Your tea's on the table. Yes, Mother, just... just coming. What are you doing in there? I've cut you a nice egg and everything... We'll get a move on, it'll all get cold. Um, uh, sorry, I think viewers at home may have lost transmission again there for the eighth week running. Um, we were going to try and sort that out, but it hardly seems worth it now, does it, anyway? Rich? It's very strange, that, yeah. Well, we've uh, already seen him, and uh, you can vote about whether he lives or dies. Please let him live. He is my own flesh, blood and pith. <laughs> but for now, it's time for, you to, time for him to ask his curious question for this week. Please welcome the Curious Orange! Here we go! <laughs> the Curious Orange! Curious Orange. I am the Curious Orange. Okay. I never said you weren't. Of course you are. Because I am you now, and I'm not Lord Hall. No. <laughs> well, I never. You know, that's ridiculous. And so, what? What I was wondering. What are you curious about this week, the Curious well, Orange? Well, Dad, I'm <laughs> Curious Orange. I'm curious about this conundrum, okay. and the conundrum is the following words. Where is my chili? What? Where's my chili? I'm the Curious Orange, and I'm. The curious orange, jelly, a cardboard box, yeah. something here is awry. Yeah. I don't think that you are the curious orange. I'm the curious orange. I'm the curious orange. Right. <laughs> well, if you are the curious orange, right, then who's that over there? Ah! What? How? Is this studio enchanted? Is this a mirror? Or did I spawn twins that fateful night? Well, I am the real Rod. I mean curious orange. <laughs> Let's see about that. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, Rod oh, oh, No, I'm not a curious no, I am Rod That's Rod Hart! Oh, 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 that was a brilliant disguise, though, Rod. Brilliant disguise. Yeah, it was a wicked scheme to dress up as a curious side so I could get free green jelly. Right. And you know what, fellas? I'd have gotten away with it, mm. too, if it hadn't have been for you pesky, meddling... Twats! Oh. Oh. This is a family show, you must oh, not please. use names. It's a live show, I can say what the f Show you can't! <laughs> you be quiet. So, you be quiet, Roger. Don't look so, so pleased so yourself. You're Stop not. it! Don't do that! So, Stop it! You are not the curious orange. No, I tricked you all! But you're not Rod Hull, either. No, I am him. I am, oh, yeah. no, I am him. I am him. And now I will bid you adieu right. because I am Rod Hull. Oh, it's uh, a very interesting, Rod, because a special package was delivered to the BBC today, and it was this green jelly. Jelly, you say? <laughs> That's right, and there was a note attached to it that said the jelly could only be given to someone who was not Rod Hull. Oh, all right. I admit it, anything for the jelly. I'm not Rod Hull. False arm, false chin. Now give me the jelly. Well, that is very interesting, Ross. Because the note attached to that jelly really said. What did it really say? Said that it could. Oh, look at it wobbling. It said it could only be given to someone who, in fact, was Rod Hull. Oh, all the pain. Oh, my arm. No good, my Rod. Real arm. It's no, I'm just gonna have to throw this jelly away. <laughs> Curse you! 
Of Achievement 1974. This week's Man of Achievement 1974 is Harold Warner Munn from Massachusetts. He worked as the office manager for Stoker Lad Heating and is the author of The Werewolf of Pankert. His hobbies include witchcraft and demonology. Men of Achievement 1974. <laughs> Men of achievement there. As we said, um, that is the final show of the series today. Thank you for watching. If you are... They are watching, um, Obviously. Uh, if you've just tuned in for the first time, I don't suppose this week's show has made much sense. <laughs> but um, <laughs> perhaps you enjoyed the colours and the swirling lights anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently some bloke from the BBC, uh, one of the Hitler blokes from the BBC, wants to take us out for lunch, which we've interpreted as a sign that there must be another series, yeah, probably. or else it's an elaborate hoax, yeah. we can't So, say. Uh, if you want to tell us uh, what you'd like to see in another series or write to us about anything, you can write to us at our own address. Come and visit us here as well. It's P.O. Box 168, <laughs> London, WC28, WC28, 7, Boo. Boo, yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, or you can email us at Lee and Herring, uh, that kind of funny round symbol, <laughs> Virgin Net. Yeah, Virgin Net. We're yeah. not with CompuServe anymore, no. as I call them <laughs> complete rubbish. Uh, <laughs> no, so do come, they've been very bad. Do leave them if you've got the chance. Right, or you can <laughs> come and do come and see us on to I'd actually I'd join them, sign up with CompuServe, and then leave them <laughs> after the free month. Uh, do come and see us on tour as well, and you can tell us in person afterwards yeah, what you think. We in some um, of those places you uh, saw. Glasgow. Actually, uh, it's good to see in the newspaper, actually. You can't take the mickey out of me anymore, Stu, because, look, uh, news item virus may hold the key to cause of obesity. Apparently, that's my new excuse, not big bones. I've got a very dangerous virus. Yeah. <laughs> makes me anyway, overweight. Now, our final <laughs> visit to Pause for Thought for the Day. <laughs> The fool said to me, if God is good, then why does he allow bad things to happen? And I replied, Watching the series, um, time now for the final results of our Curious Orange. Sing or die, phone in. Sing, he's my son, let him yeah. sing. Well, wow, that's staggering. 49% or 325 of you voted for the Curious Orange to be crushed into a pulp. Well, a bigger 51% or 339 voted to hear the Orange sing his song again. Yeah. So the Curious Orange, sing your <laughs> song! Oh, thank you for saving me. Go on, son, sing. Sing, sing with out. all your heart. Sing out loud. Be proud. Come and dance, little children. I am in love with the world, with its sky and its seas and its plains. Oh. Oh. I am in love with the world as it spins round my soul again. Oh. I fell in love with the world when it gave me a place to be. Just been told there's been a miscount. The audience actually voted for you to be crushed to a pulp.